In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this little five inch monitor and turn it into a sensor panel for your PC. You can mount it on the side of your monitor or beneath it. I'll show you the screen in some more detail and do a full review of that. And I'll show you the free software that you can use to add gauges to the display. A company called Electro have kindly sent me their five inch touchscreen to use in this project. So big thanks to them for sending that through. Let's do a quick unboxing of that and see what you get. Okay, so inside we have a pack of wires there. We'll take a look in, in there. Um, got some standoffs, some screws. Got instructions on how to get that working with the Raspberry Pi and the settings and details the, uh, the buttons you can use for the menu. A bit more on a quick start guide. Got drivers uh, for the touchscreen component. Uh, those are also available on their website. And then the screen itself. Now there was a protect, another protective layer on that, which I've removed. Um, but as you can see, it's also got another one here, which I've kept on nearly all of the time. You'll probably notice it in some of the other videos. Kept it on just because of the uh, DIY that I've been doing and didn't want to get any damage to the screen there. Um, so that's what we've got there. So let's just take a look in that packet, see what connectors we've got. Okay, so we've got a micro USB cable that looks about 30 centimeters long. And then we've got a USB cable here, like the, uh, the flat cable that they've used there. That's kind of cool. And that's about 30 centimeters long. Looks really good. And then we've got a HDMI to mini HDMI connector here. So that will allow you to connect it up to a newer Raspberry Pi 4, which have those, uh, those small HDMI connectors. Okay, so let's take a look at the unit itself. So got the screen there, obviously, um, and that protective layer that I talked about earlier. Uh, going around to the side here, we've got headphone out. Um, so it will do HDMI audio. So the audio will come into the HDMI socket. Uh, there's no speaker in this, um, but you can get the audio back out through the headphone jack, which is quite neat. And then we've got two micro USB sockets here. Um, one is for power and the other one could be for touch. So you can power the screen from an adapter using one of the sockets and then the other socket can go to the computer that you're using. So it might be a Raspberry Pi or a PC and then that can go into one of the USB sockets to act as the touch driver. Uh, like I say, so we've got HDMI, uh, the headphone out and two of those micro USB sockets. If you are connecting it to a PC, you can actually power the whole screen from the uh, USB socket on the PC. Then on this other side, we've got the menu buttons. So we've got touch buttons here, uh, hit the menu button, and then it'll bring on the on-screen display, uh, up and down, uh, return from that menu, and a manual power button. The screen resolution is 800 by 480, uh, and that's at 60 hertz. Uh, so just make sure, especially on Windows, that it's using the right settings. I certainly had to go into the uh, display drivers and select the uh, correct resolution. Windows seemed to want to do it at 800 by 600, and that came out looking a bit squashed. Um, but uh, do have a look at those settings and make sure that they're correct for this device. Now the capacitive touchscreen should be a lot more responsive than some of the other models where it's resistive. Uh, so resistive is where you have to sort of push down that will track your finger across the screen. Capacitive is more like your phone, uh, where it's reading an electrical contact off your finger. So it should be a lot more accurate. Not had a chance to have a look at any of that on the PC, um, but for my purposes, we don't need the touchscreen input. So what we'll do is quickly set this up with the Raspberry Pi. So here's one that I grabbed earlier. And now we're gonna hook all of this up to battery power, including the screen. So we'll use their, their neat HDMI cable, plug that in. Okay, so that's plugged into the Pi. And then we use another power bank to power the screen. Plug that in there. Okay, I've rejigged that a little bit so it's a bit more pointed at the screen. Uh, so we'll power on the Raspberry Pi. And there we go. That's booting up. The uh, screen is bright enough, especially if you are using this as a secondary display on your PC uh, and it's going to be inside a PC case or 
attached to the side of the screen, it's a really good level of brightness. Okay, so that's booted up. Um, obviously in the menu system here, so I'm pressing the buttons on the side and we can go through, oh, that was a return, menu at the top, and then we can go through the options here. One thing I did do was uh, go in and uh, set the aspect ratio to auto earlier on, and that worked quite well on the PC. So I went in there and set it from 16 by, by nine to auto, and that helped with uh, some of the resolution issues that I was seeing on the PC. Uh, I wouldn't mess with sharpness uh, unless you have any particular problem. Uh, let's go back up so you can see some of the other options in there. I don't think there's especially a lot that you're gonna to have to tinker with. Uh, I don't think you'd be in this menu a lot. The menu there says that we're at 54 on the brightness, so it can go higher. So let's try that. That's your maximum. Take it back down to 54 because that background was getting too uh, kind of grey. Anyway, you can tinker with those to uh, your satisfaction, um, but the out of the box settings, apart from that aspect ratio, uh, I've kind of left those alone. So really, just straight out of the box, this works and it's going to be fantastic to use it in this project. One of the things I like about it are these tabs that you get across the corners. Uh, that allows me to attach it quite nicely into the frames that we're going to be using. If you don't need these, you can just snip them off. Um, they're not that thick on the board. Uh, you could probably use some wire cutters or something to, uh, to clip those off uh, quite easily. Um, overall, I think this is a really well designed board. Resolution looks really good. It really suits DIY projects very well. It also comes with all the right cables and connectors, so you can really get up and running quickly. And I think this is gonna be great for this project. So the first one that we're gonna do is a frame that attaches to the side of the monitor. I'm gonna take the display, and mark it out on a piece of paper, and we'll create a paper template first so that we can then transfer that onto a piece of card. Just make sure the card is stiff enough. Some cardboard, like if you get a cereal carton, that's going to be too thin, but uh, do go for something that is a bit more rigid. Once I've cut that out, it's a pretty tight fit actually. And you can get access to the buttons around the sides. Uh, there is a gap between where we're going to screw things in place. So you could put something underneath and then glue it in place, uh, but we'll look at a better solution for that. I'm going to score a line across here so it's easier to fold the card. And then that is ready to fit on top of the monitor. So I've given it a quick test here with some masking tape to just stick it in place temporarily. Do keep an eye on this because it does <laughs> detach itself if you leave it too long. So it needs to be a bit more permanent, but that's looking all right. I kind of adjusted the design so that uh, we cut a, a further panel out to allow us to get to the buttons. And then I started mixing some paint here. Uh, so we're gonna color it a gray color to match the bezel on my monitor. But if your monitor is black plastic, then that's gonna be a lot easier. So let's deal with this gap. I'm gonna take a bunch of metal washers and if I put those in a little stack underneath and then I've got a suitable screw here, uh, we can take that in from the back and bolt it in place with the standoffs that came with the screen. I'm just gonna use a drill to um, poke the holes through. It just makes it a little bit easier to uh, get the screw through. And then we can pop those washers on top and then put the standoffs in place uh, and that's nice and secure looks pretty good too. So my initial thoughts were to use a super sticky double-sided tape uh, to attach this to the top of the monitor. Now this did work initially, but after some time it does come off. So what we need to do is adjust the design slightly to have a tab that runs down the side of the monitor, and maybe a small like an A-frame underneath to support it. The, uh, the pull of the HDMI cable is a lot more than I originally thought, and it does pull it off. But I also found the viewing angle, when it's flat against the monitor like this, isn't that great, and it could do with being uh, kind of brought in a little bit on the side, so that could be a, a change to the design. It's difficult to achieve in cardboard, but maybe if you 3D printed it, it would be a lot better. 
So next up, I'm gonna look at the design that fits underneath the monitor. I realized I could do this uh, when I was messing with cardboard from uh, one of the boxes and found that this is a relatively straightforward design to do in cardboard. So here we go, cutting the template out and it looks pretty good. And again, the monitor fits into that hole really without needing any additional fixings, uh, but I would suggest that uh, you fix it in place with a, uh, the washers and screws like I did uh, with the frame that attaches to the side. Although it looks pretty good uh, just as cardboard, I'm gonna color it black. I'm gonna mix that with PVA glue, uh, which kind of makes it a little bit more hard wearing uh, and gives it a nice texture. Paint that all over. I put some additional cutouts on the side there for the cables to go through and here it is in place, looking pretty good. If you want to take this one step further, you could go online and find a 3D printed frame. Uh, now, if you look on Thingiverse, there are a few frames that look like they'll fit this screen, uh, so that looks pretty good. Uh, you could, if you don't actually have a 3D printer, you can send it to a third party uh, who will print that for you. Uh, I found one that would probably do that for about £12, which is their minimum order. Um, but the price in plastic was about £6 uh, and £2 delivery, which wasn't too bad. So maybe you want to try a couple of prints for that one. Once you've got the display attached to your PC, use the standard Windows settings to set where the screen is in comparison to your display. And then you'll find that you can drag your cursor across into it. I'd also suggest turning off the taskbar. So go into personalization, go into taskbar, and change the uh, taskbar behavior so that it doesn't extend onto that secondary display. That tidies things up a little bit. Then we're gonna use some free software called RainMeter, and that will give us the gauges that we're gonna use on the display. Those gauges have been built by one of the users of RainMeter, uh, and I think he's done a really good job on these. We'll also need HW Info, uh, which is the thing that supplies the data from your system into the meter. I would suggest setting up HW Info first before you go and look at the meters. So what you wanna do in here is rename some of the device names, which are kind of messy. Just make those the short names for the devices that you've got, uh, and then that will appear a lot better in the gauges that you're gonna use. Then you need to go through the list looking for the things that you want to appear in the gauges. Then you go in, look at the properties, Go to HW Info Gadget and enable the report in Gadget checkbox. Then you can start setting up the gauges in RainMeter, pick the style that you want, and then start putting in the index of each of the sensors. So they do quite a nice handy lookup here. And this is where it's important to uh, get all the values that you want to monitor up front because this uh, these values of the index can change if you add things in later um, but you can then pick through this list uh, and add them into the gauge in each of the sensor slots if you're displaying temperature as the main metric in the gauge uh, that big number then you may want to put the degree symbol in there to do that if you go into edit skin and then scroll down the text file that opens up And then you're looking for the value text and the text entry for that and just pop the degree symbol after the sensor temperature. Once you're happy with them on your main desktop, you can just drag them over onto your second sensor panel screen. And then for these particular rain meter gauges, you can use the mouse wheel to change the size, which is really neat. So I hope you found this useful. It's a relatively straightforward project, especially when you're working with cardboard, and I still think it gives really good results. The display that we're using in this project is really good. I could see us maybe using this in a mini arcade machine that you could build out of cardboard. Let me know in the comments your ideas and uh, maybe some modifications to this project. Hope you found it useful. See you next time.